Research teams from the United States and Mexico have just published the complete maize genome, the entire set of genetic information belonging to the plant better known to us as corn. The American sequence from a modern variety called B73 provided a baseline of genetic information against which to compare the Mexican race, Palomero. I went to Mexico to get the story behind the research and to put the genome sequence into the context of the history of maize cultivation. The story began just southwest of Mexico City at Nevada de Toluca. The Aztecs called this volcano Lord of the Cornstalks because it looks down on cornfields that have been cultivated for millennia. In the end, a 15-mile trip on unsurfaced road took me most of the way up. Then a lung-aching hike took me up the final pitch to a pass at 14,000 feet that looks down on the lakes in the center of this vast caldera. The Toluca volcano erupted most recently 10,000 years ago, carpeting the region with ash and debris. Now a comparison of the genome sequences of two races of maize shows that this eruption may have been critical to the evolution of modern corn. Both races have conserved genes for the decontamination of heavy metals such as cadmium and zinc. Prior to industrialization, volcanic eruptions would have been the major source of heavy metals in the soil, and it appears that the cultivation of maize selected for plants that were tolerant. To get the details on this story, I traveled 200 miles northwest to the National Laboratory of Genomics for Biodiversity in Irapuato. This immaculately modern facility was designed to bring Mexico into the International Genome Sequencing Club, and the Palomero genome was its first big project. Luis Herrera Estrella, the laboratory's director, and Jean-Philippe Villel Casada, who headed the genome sequencing effort, told me about the cultural significance of the project. Well, maize is probably the most important crop in Mexico. If you go back to the Indian culture, the, the, the Mayas believed that men was made out of maize. And since then, Maize has taken an integral part of the development of Mexico, culturally, in terms of religion, economically, and also uh, is, is a major component of the Mexican diet. So we consider that it was uh, an, an absolute requirement of Mexico to participate in the sequences of, of the maize genome, and that we could select a, a maize genotype that was uh, ancient and it could be used also to compare with other sequencing projects that were done in, in, in the U.S. Palomero ha has been found by Mexican archaeologists uh, dating back to 1900 before Christ. So these are, this is what we call the classic period of, uh, of Mexican Mesoamerican cultures. And in Teotihuacan, there were offerings, burial offerings, where you could find uh, cobs of Palomero that had their seeds still attached and popped. So it's very interesting. And uh, it's only one of four land races that have been found in archaeological remainings. So therefore, it's believed to be one of the most ancestral land races. Contrary to the expected sequence differences that increased as maize diversified into different varieties, Jean-Philippe's comparison of Palomero and B73 turned up long stretches of identical sequences shared by both genomes. Interestingly enough, among the collection of genes that are present within, with the, within those conserved regions, the most highly represented ones encode for genes that confer responses to abiotic stress, in other words, to environmental stresses. And among those, the most highly conserved and that really behave as what we call domestication genes and code for heavy metal tolerance response. And that was really intriguing for us. Uh, we, we found that at least three of them, which are non-linked, mean separated in the genome quite distantly, are clearly behaving as domestication genes, meaning that these genes were probably selected very early on during maize evolution. And then the question comes, well, why would genes that encode for heavy metal tolerance be selected very early on? Could these native Mexicans have the ability to distinguish responses to heavy metal? That's clearly not the case.
uh, what is most probable is that indeed environmental conditions that were uh, present at that time, that were dominating at that time, influenced maize domestication. We start inquiring about uh, volcanic activity in the region that is considered the cradle of maize domestication. And amazingly enough, we found out that uh, there is a period of time in, in which what we call the trans-Mexican volcanic belt uh, was very active. My exploration came full circle when I traveled 50 miles south of Nevada de Toluca to the agricultural region near Iguala. I went looking for a rock shelter where the story of maize begins. Biologists believe maize was first domesticated in this area along the tributaries of the Balsas River, and this is where the most closely related wild relatives of corn are found. After a jarring ride up a rock-strewn road, I followed an old man up an obscure path to find a small shelter beneath a giant boulder. It wasn't much to look at, and it was filled with threatening bees, but it was thrilling all the same. I've just hiked up to the rock shelter here, which takes us back to the very origins of maize cultivation. Microscopic analysis of grinding stones found here carry traces of maize that date back 8,700 years ago. That's as ancient as the oldest evidence we have for cultivation of wheat in the Fertile Crescent. Ancient Mesoamerican farmers would likely have grown and harvested maize in the fields of the tributaries of the Balsas River Valley just below us. Then they would have brought the dry maize here to this shelter and ground it into meal. The grinding stones were really nothing fancy. They were just like these river rocks that I have here. They would have been effective enough, though, in breaking up the maize kernels into a rough cornmeal that could have been combined with water and heated to make a simple porridge, or made into a stiffer dough and fashioned into that quintessential Mexican staple, the tortilla. In Mexico, I learned that the story of maize is so wrapped up in human history that it is difficult to draw a line between the plant and the people who brought it under domestication. The line also blurs between science and culture.